we had Nuance at uh, Mobile World Congress 2010 and uh, issuing voice recognition software on the iPhone and Android. So what we have here is an application that we uh, deployed in the App Live Store in the United States in December of, uh, of last year, which enables the user to just dictate using their voice. So we open up the application, it presents a, a UI, uh, and then I can dictate the, uh, the body of the message just by tapping and then speaking into it. So I'll uh, try and do that and keep it still. Hello and welcome to uh, Nuance at Mobile World Congress in Barcelona. Again, it's taking that off-board and then, then process, processing, that, processing that in the network. And, in the network. Uh, in the network. And, and it's come back as the, uh, the, the word is incorrect. You can then tap on it and it, it gives you a correction interface yeah. to, to, to be able to correct that. You can then dictate and carry on dictating if you wish, but then if you press this button here, you can then put it into the, uh, the body of a, uh, for example, an email. Uh, and, and then address the email and then send it. That's fast. It's very quick, it's very accurate. Uh, it's, it's, it's running in US English and uh, North American accent in English right now. And, and uh, it's online? It's online, it's connected service. Uh, you, as, you, as you can appreciate, the, uh, the Dragon engine supports over 300,000 words, so trying to do that on a device is almost impossible. However, uh, putting it in the network and having, having that additional computational power yeah. uh, enables you to do it in a timely and, a, and an accurate manner. Because the Dragon works on normal uh, on, on Windows computers, right? And, and uh, on desktop computers. Correct. Because you need a lot of storage for it. Uh, it's, or is it, it, it a lot of processing power? It's, it's, a, it's a fair amount of computational power that you yeah. need to, uh, to use. So having it in the network enables you to see that yeah. speed that you've got there, the accuracy that you've got. Uh, and, and, uh, and, and makes it usable on the mobile device. Because the desktop client does not use the web. The to do the, it doesn't do online translation. No, the desktop client is, a, is, a, is a, an application that's installed on the, on the desktop. So, so it means that you, you have a server farm, like uh, many servers processing all the requests to recognize audio files, small yes. audio files, yes. that you just upload. So Nuance has uh, a, a number of hosting centers around the world. Uh, and the infrastructure, the computing power for this is, is uh, in, those, uh, in those hosting centers. And, uh, and, and it supports many, many people. It's, I mean, people have to pay for the app. At the moment, so the, it scales like that. At the moment, the application is free for the, uh, for the, for the yeah. iStore. Um, and, uh, and it's been very, very successful in, uh, in pushing the, new, uh, the, the Dragon brand out to the market. Uh, and we're getting very, very uh, good reviews back on the uh, on the I, I, iTunes Store to uh, yeah. to recommend the application. Would, would you say that uh, online uh, online uh, translate uh, sorry voice recognition is more precise than the desktop base? It's it's slightly less than the desktop base. Slightly less because of the environment in which you're working with. Generally, in the desktop environment, you're going to be working in a quiet or a quieter mm -hmm. environment. You know, here. As you can hear, it's, it's quite a hostile environment. There is a lot of noise, a lot of uh, background noise. And as you can see from that recognition, it's fairly robust in that environment. All right. And it, you have it on Android as well? I, I have an element of that on Android. But before we leave that, we yeah. can look at Search. So Search is the other application that we have in the uh, Apple App Store. It, it does a, a, a similar thing, so we can uh, ask it questions, and it will then uh, come back and ask that. So I can say something like the... Uh, Find music by Mary J. Blige. Again, that's going to go out. It's server-side based. It's going to present that back. And here it is. you can see the queries that has been resolved. Mary J. Blige. Difficult recognition. Needs to know that Mary J. Dot Blige is, you know, spelt bilge, uh, is, is, is what I was looking for. And then in, the, in the, uh, the presentation at this point, you can see that we can actually look at that query in a number of places. So I can look in YouTube, for example, for music by Mary J. Blige. It's now going to look at YouTube to do that. I can take it into Twitter. Uh, it's looking for videos now of Mary J. Blige, for example. Yeah. So you can see how you can uh, implement this in many different ways to, uh, to, yeah. to search the web very easily using your voice. You probably wouldn't have put that query in via a tactile interface. All right. And, and uh, so, so is it exactly the same on the Android? No, it's, it's, a, it's a slightly different implementation on Android. Yeah. So with a couple of things we're showing on Android we have similar applications, slightly different UI, so it, it wouldn't be really any advantage to show that. But what we're showing on the on the Android device is uh, is the capability of uh, using your finger 
to type messages or to write messages. So down here we have what we call T9 Write. So T9 Write enables me to use my finger to, uh, to, to write uh, text messages, to author text messages. So just simply I'm going to write my name, so John, here, and it's recognizing. Now what you can see added, the added value here is the use of XT9 capabilities, the word prediction here. I've stopped at John because that's what I wanted to put, but you can see the other words that use those, uh, yeah. those characters ahead. Down the side, you can see, is the, uh, is the, the, sim the, uh, the representation of similar shapes. Of, uh, that I actually uh, that I actually used in there. So that could have been Joan, for example, because my H I could have been really misunderstood as being an A. Yeah. Likewise, if we move on, we just add a space there, and we put another word in there. So, for example, morning is a word I, I write. So I, I M O R, and just stop at that point. I can then see that morning is available to me there without having to type the rest and just select. And you can see how you can continually build that out. With a little bit of practice, this becomes a very fast method of uh, entering uh, text, particularly on a small, so uh, a small QWERTY keyboard. So if I was to change that now, I've got the input made, 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 uh, change the input to, uh, to a QWERTY keyboard. Yeah, as you can see, that is a very small keypad. So people with larger fingers will find it very difficult to write messages very quickly on that, or make lots of mistakes. So we're using T9 in the background, very accurate, very fast method of entering text so into character it. recognition with the finger on a capacitive touch screen. And, and it's optimized for that. It's optimized for the capacity touch yeah. screen, yes. All right. And uh, so you're working to combine voice with uh, uh, character recognition and with the keyboard and yeah. everything so people can get their text inputted. Exactly. As fast as possible. That's so, the goal. Uh, yeah, yeah. Uh, so here I can now change my mode if I want to. And now I've got a tap to speak button. So I say, good, John, good morning. How are you today? Nice. So I've changed it now. So now I just choose, depending on my environment, obviously I wouldn't generally take change within the What did you tap to, to add your... So I have a button here at the bottom here that says tap, tap to, to speak. speak. Tap to speak. So using our same two similar technology as you saw on the, yeah. on the iPhone, different implementation here underneath the keyboard allows the user to select which mechanism he wishes to... Uh, to enter the text into the nice. uh, into the client. So uh, an Android user has more like a, is because in a, maybe a more open platform, the integration is a little bit um, more advanced than the iPhone one for now. Correct, but that's not really down to the implementation yeah. of the person putting that in. You can put a very rich and very sophisticated UI around that to make it very attractive and uh, yeah. uh, and usable for the for the user. But what we're offering really is is a many uh, yeah. input mechanisms to uh, yeah. for the user to be able to select and yeah. and put text into their phone. Can we, can we test my French accent uh, just one second to see if it's going to Unfortunately, work? it won't recognize it. I'll try to... I'll try to uh, it's speaker independent, it, so it's actually learning it, my voice. It's learning your voice. And, and will recognize my voice. It starts off in a speaker yeah. independent mode. So out of the box, it will yeah. probably go, do a very good method, uh, a very good recognition against yourself. Yeah. But over time, it will. It is yeah. now recognizes my accent and yeah. uh, But if we, and if, we if we did uh, like uh, just to, to test, if you would borrow it to somebody and just so they can use it quickly, and what would you do to to, to uh, reset it? Uh, is there like an easy there, setting for that? There you, is don't, a, you don't want to delete, of course, yours. You save yours, your profile. You come back easily to your again, profile. Again, that would be an implementation issue. We haven't got, come across those issues okay. right now. So uh, it's something that we would obviously have to work at in a project with a with an OEM or a vendor or, or someone who wants to provide the service. So to you would want to, to let me try? I, I wouldn't let you. Let, on the video, let you just not, to see what not on the video. No, no I wouldn't no, let okay. you try. But I'm okay. sure I'll let, I'll let you have a go when it's not on there. Okay. And so Android, when is it available? Uh, it, we are talking to OEMs and the carriers about implementing this technology onto their devices, uh, and that will be the route to market. Um, that, that you will see it uh, coming onto phones uh, as, as they roll out. And uh, so are you providing this as an e easy alternative to what Google is doing as well? Is it, is it an alternative or are you working with them? Or how no, does it, work? it is an alternative to yeah. what, Google, what, what potentially Google are doing. Yeah. Google don't do the dictation level that we do uh, yeah. and they certainly don't have the language coverage that we have. All right. So you have, uh, but it will be an easy switch. If people want new ones, should be able to switch easily. Uh, that's right? an implementation issue. Yeah, yeah, yeah that's, is. that's an implementation issue yeah. uh, that uh, that the, the, the vendor, the OEM, yeah. or the carrier would need to uh, yeah. to look at. It's not not something yeah. that nuance would control. Because when you have this keyboard and you show with, that you have your uh, 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 like, there's a, the the button at the bottom that says push to speak. That's a, a modified keyboard. 
right? Correct. That you, because you're able to modify the existing open source yes. keyboards and everything, and you can just add your button or change. People can customize the phone as they want. And that's an advantage. That's correct. So the, well, it's not people that customize the phone. It's the, it's the OEM and the person that integrates that technology onto the device would actually customize that interface. Yeah. And how it looks and feels yeah. and how it's implemented on the device is really the responsibility of those or the carriers they're supplying yeah. those devices to. Or the marketplace, right? Or the marketplace, yeah, yes. So, so people can, if they like... It, yeah. Yes, so that, you know, we're not going to ever rule out that the uh, that we could do this as a direct, con direct consumer market, yeah. and in the way that we've uh, we've uh, promoted Dragon into the uh, the iStore. And, and do you, do you, by people using it more and more, do you get better and better at recognizing voice? Yes, we, we learn as you go. So yeah. uh, they, as I say, this this model is, uh, is is adapted itself to my voice, and therefore it wouldn't work as yeah. well with uh, with other people's uh, voice profiles on it. However, out of the box. It, it recognizes at a very good rate from, from day one. But all, the, all the, the, the voice messages people are uploading to your servers, you might be using them to improve your algorithms and all that. Do you constantly, automatically you do that? Or? Uh, we don't yeah. do that automatically, and, uh, and part of the agreement is that we would uh, we would have with the carrier or the OEM is actually to, uh, um, to, to, to use that data to improve our models. Uh, getting that data is, uh, and improving the models is obviously the goal of New York. Yes. All right, but well, thanks. But it's mm -hmm. anonymous, of course, so people should not be afraid of you listening to everything they dictate in their emails. It, it's, it's, it's just it's, only, it's just to improve the recognition. It is, and it's, it's generally not done by humans, it's done by computers in an automated way. Okay, thanks. Thank you.